Hello, plant people. So I am just finishing editing part two of this three-part series on peat moss harvesting in Canada. You guys are gonna love this one. I spoke with a plant biologist specific to reclamation of the site. So in this interview, we get into everything from how Canada is the leading expert on reclaiming bog lands and how the practices we follow are actually being used to reclaim heavily damaged ones over in Europe. And then we also discuss how we don't harvest all the way from the bog, we only harvest portions of it, and how things like endangered species, species density, all that stuff factors into how the bog harvesting process takes place. Stephanie is an absolute pro when it comes to this stuff. She's been in the industry for many, many years working with Ducks Unlimited and other conservation groups. I mean, if we're talking someone who knows bog reclamation, this is the lady. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, be sure to give it a thumbs up and of course hit that subscribe button so you do not miss the last interview, which was with Premier Tech, which if you do not know, is a peat moss provider for growers on an industrial scale and for us gardeners here in Canada and the US. So you will not want to miss that. So hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and let's just get straight into it. Okay, so we are here now with Stephanie. She is also a part of the CSPMA, but she's the science coordinator, and she's also the director of APTHQ, which is the French version of Cana or the English, right? The Quebec Association for the province of Quebec. So can you give us an introduction to who you are and what is a science coordinator for peat? Yes, well, I'm a, a plant biologist. I have a master's degree in plant biology. And uh, when I did my master's degree, it was in peatland restoration research. So I'm a kind of an expert in peatland restoration now since uh, I'm, I've been working in peatland since uh, 1994. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. So I used to work at Laval University in the peatland ecology research group for 16 years. And then I moved away to work uh, for two years and a half with Ducks Unlimited Canada. And then the industry came to, uh, to offer me a job as their science coordinator because there was a need from their side too to understand better the research they were doing, to know where to go because they were in a renewal of new programs. So, so there were a need to have somebody helping them with developing the new research programs and uh, making sure the link with the researchers are good and uh, that we can exchange fluently and uh, frequently. Yeah, so absolutely. So when it comes to peatland harvesting, I know sometimes that it can take hundreds of years for a peat bog to reestablish. And I know that that's a big concern for many people using peat. And Asha kind of, um, Asha was saying this before that we really haven't done much of a even a dent in just the peat uh, bogs across Canada in general. But can you speak to the setting up an, of a nursery bog? I know in Canada we're not harvesting all the way to the bottom. And how long does that take to reestablish? I know there's also some research that's been going into faster ways to establish this, um, some technology on that side. But can you just speak to that in general, um, how that's working? Yes, well, the restoration, you know, when you stop harvesting peat for uh, horticultural purpose, you still have uh, some peat left. So it's not, uh, there's still me some meters of peat. Uh, they stop when the, the characteristic of the peat is not uh, as good for horticultural purposes. So, um, and it's important to stop at the point where the, the quality of the peat is still acidic and still suitable for peatland restoration. So mm. to be able to have a, a good peat, a good restoration, it needs to be still acidic, still uh, fibric peat and not too much decomposed. When you're done, maybe the, the restoration consists of uh, spreading some plants, peatland plants, and this, you take this from a donor site. So the donor site would be either an area that will be open for peat harvesting in the future, or that would be a donor site that is designated beside your harvesting area and that you keep untouched to have a good uh, sphagnum propagule. So uh, you just take the top of it 
and he spread it over a one to 10 ratio from an area based uh, ratio. One meter square goes to 10 meters square, let's say. So the data site is important for that. You have a, a, you cannot restore your peatland if you don't have the proper data site. And the data site is also an important characteristic of the certification. Probably that's someone, some of my colleagues uh, talked to you about a certification before, but uh, yeah. that's uh, one requirement to make sure that your data site is suitable in terms of viability of the plants there and in, in terms of sufficient area. So the auditor would go and look at your donor site if it's a proper donor site. And obviously um, species, species density, um, as a plant biologist, you're likely taking assessments, you're using your handy dandy squares um, okay. and putting, <laughs> anyone who's worked in plant science knows exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, place that in and you're doing your species analysis, density of species, and then that would be what you would replace into that donor site. And exactly. if there was any sort of rare, uh, species that bog would be not available for harvest correct you're right you're right yes yeah okay right. but what is look looking the, the, the species that is looking look for when you want to restore this the sinum muscles but the good species of sinum muscles because there are plenty so you don't mm -hmm. want the one that grows in the water you want the the one that grows in the um, Hummock, like create some kind of, uh, they, they grow denser and they're, they're yeah. better for restoration. So after the uh, bog is harvested, what is the rebound time for that? And is there technology or chemicals or anything used to help expedite that process? The sinum in five months by regular machinery, like a manuspreader, is really the techniques that has been developed in Canada with the research that has been done over the last 30 years. So uh, it's not just raw wetting, it's introducing the muscles. That is the, the, the Canadian way to do things, let's say. And, and that is, a, that the, is that the method that the rest of the world is so interested in? Like that's where we're kind of the leaders in regards yes. to peat bog restoration? Yes, yes. We are. And uh, in Europe, they, they start just only raw wetting. So then the biodiversity doesn't came back as much as mm. with the, the, the we, we call it the moss layer transfer techniques, just to make it clear. But also the problem in Europe is, is sometimes they don't have enough dinocyte. So they are also looking at how to propagate sinum from spores or from little fragments. Oh. Some of the way that are more technical and more more expensive. But because we have so many peatlands, we are able to manage Properly, our donor sites. And by the way, yeah. since we are harvesting just the top for the, as donor material, uh, the research has have shown that the site is uh, really doesn't. There's no impact after five years, and you can go back to harvest again for to use it again as a donor site. So because you need to take care of it, like uh, and to make sure that you just harvest the top, but it's really uh, regenerating well. So, it's pretty quick at exactly. coming back. Exactly, for the other side. But for the restoration side, you introduce the plant, you put a straw mulch because you don't want them to draw there. You mm -hmm. do it, the wetting is very important, it's the peatland. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the plant biodiversity is, uh, is really recovering very fast. So the plant established within three to five years and then starts to accumulate. And it's mostly typical like peatland plant communities. Uh, maybe there are some, two, three, four species that doesn't come back so easily. Those one takes a little bit more time. And then you will see a raise in herbs that will go down with time and then an increase in ericaceae shrubs because they take a little bit longer, but the plant, the plant's diversity is there. The next thing that is coming back is a carbon sink function. So we are looking really much at the function of the peatland. Mm -hmm. And um, because you're draining the peatland, it's uh, converting the sink to a, a source of carbon. But when we restore, we have wet, we put the plants back, the plants start to grow and accumulate. It takes between 12 to 15 years to uh, recover the carbon sink function. Uh, okay. So that, that is what we believe is really important. Of course, we don't pretend that the deposit, the peat deposit will come back so quickly. It takes years and hundreds of years and uh, maybe uh, 1,000 years to recover the peat profile, like the peat uh, deposit. But the function, the plant, the hydrology is back in the landscape. Uh, and this is uh, really important. So it's a temporary impact of the function of the peat. So when we harvest peats, we know um, from a soil science perspective, I know that it's a big divot in the ground and people will look at it and they think it's just this flat little soil profile, but it's actually a big hole. Um, 
when we look at that and how that hole filled over, you know, thousands of years, because in Canada, we're only harvesting that top portion. Are we really um, undoing thousands of years or are we really only un- undoing, like you said, 20, maybe 30 years of progress? Well, the peatlands in Canada, it's a, I've started uh, accumulating after the glaciation. So they are around mm-hmm. 60,000 to 80, 6,000 to 8,000 years old. And yeah. uh, so it starts with the fen peat, mostly like it's a little bit more herb. So the, the, and then at one point it switched towards sphagnum and the peat change. Yeah. Uh, so it's really uh, over a thousand of years. When we harvest, yes, we harvest some peat that can be uh, as old as 2000 years because it's the, it's how it is. The peat is uh, something that grows slowly and accumulates slowly. Uh, but again, uh, it's like, I think it's like between forest and core. It's not mining, it's not forestry, it's not agriculture. We are kind of in the middle of all those things. Yeah. Uh, of course, peatland are important, but we believe that responsible peatland management, like taking into consideration uh, the importance of conserving natural area, conserving donor site, harvesting with the best practices that you can have, and restoring as soon as you're finished harvesting, it's limiting the impact that we have uh, overall, considering that all other products can have impact as well. So it's a matter of balancing the benefits and the cost of it, you know. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on, Stephanie. This is awesome talking to someone who's involved in the science of restoration and usage and all that sort of stuff. You got me, you know, all excited. I I've done some plant uh, biology or ecology classes before. And so the idea of being able to see different species and, um, you know, making sure you're restoring them, it's just all way too cool for me. So I want to thank you so much for coming on. Do you have any closing comments that you would like to add just to the community peat industry in general that you hope my subscribers or just someone watching who's trying to learn more about the Canadian peat industry? Do you have any closing comments for them? Well, I invite um, anyone who wants to see more or understand more about the peat and peatland restoration and all the, the, the research we are doing to look at our website, peatmoss.com. But also if you come in Eastern Canada, you can contact me and I can uh, invite you to visit a new uh, restored peatland that will be a real pleasure for me. <laughs> oh, very cool. My subscribers will absolutely <laughs> love that. So Stephanie, thank you so much. I I'm sure my subscribers are absolutely going to love this. They're going to want to pick your brain when they come on a tour, but bring boots, guys, bring your hip leaders. You have no idea. It's like walking on the moon. People, you have to experience a peat bog. It's a very, very unique ecosystem. So, And and if you know peat bogs and I bring you in a restored peatland, you will never know it's a restored peatland. I can can bet on that. Original to the, okay. Okay. I've, I've never seen a restored one. I've only seen native ones, um, like natural. So yeah. Okay. Awesome. 